Good evening, good morning, good afternoon. Wherever you might be watching this uh, channel from, we thank God that uh, you've been watching through and I trust that you've been blessed by the sermons and even the devotions that have been shared through this Donafric uh, channel. I want to thank God for enabling us once again to meet here and even to share words of comfort unto thy brethren. My name is Ruth Ogando, and today we're going to share about the prayer of Jabez. And uh, the prayer of Jabez is recorded in the book, in the Bible, in the book, First Chronicles, chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. And I'm going to read. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bear him with sorrow. Verse 10. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou goodest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me, and thou would keep me from evil, and that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he had requested. Now, uh, in these two verses, two people are being mentioned. That is... Uh, Actually, three people, the classes of people. We see the mother, we see Jabez, and the brethren. And uh, the Bible records that uh, Jabez was born with a lot of sorrow. That is what the mother recorded. And because of that, he gave him the name Jabez, which meant that he was born out of pain and sorrow. And ideally, he had so many challenges in his life. But we're going to look at that in as much as Jabez was born in that condition, he could not let that condition to ruin his life. And the prayer that he made in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 10 changes everything else and even the perspective of any person who's going to listen to this message today. That you don't need to let your past dictate what you're going to be in future. You don't let what other people feel that is wrong with you to dictate what you want in life. You don't need to use your name so that it can rest on you, so that you don't get to the blessings that you really wanted. And now in this verse, I'm going to note seven points that come out strongly in chapter, in verses 10. And the first one is petition. The first one is petition. The second one is patronage. The fourth one is prosperity. The fifth one is presence. The sixth one is protection. And the seventh one is pleasure. Now, Let's start with number one, which is pitiable. Now, we say that the mother of Jabez feels pity for his son who was born in sorrow. And his mother calls his name Jabez because he bore him in sorrow. So Jabez began his life in a pitiable condition. He was a source of sorrow to the mother. And I'm so sure that as a mother who has a baby at that age who is born out of sorrow and is, you're not assured of the future, it's a big heart or a burden that a parent can carry. So he began his life with stigma. His future did not look bright. And thus, there was a lot of miserable and patheticness in his life. But he decides that he's not going to spend the rest of his life in a pitiable condition. And that's the same hope I'm bringing to you today. You don't need to spend the rest of your life in a pitiable condition just because you've been born in conditions where at least there is some pitiable uh, circumstances in it. He wanted a better life and a blessed life. And indeed, he wanted to change his destiny. And by doing that, he made a prayer unto God. That brings us to point number two, which is called petition. And so it says, and Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, so that is point number two, he petitioned God. So Jabez called on the name of God to change his destiny. Have you ever been in a situation where you feel it's so low and you don't have anything to do? Which option did you take? Which choice did you make? Did you ask God to any way be able to lift you up out of that condition? Just like Jabez, he, were, he went directly to the source of all the blessings and favor, and that is the Lord himself. He knew that it was only God who was going to change his condition. And it's good news unto us all as we're going to watch this clip. Are you having the trust and faith in God because he's the only one who is going to change your condition? He knew that God could completely transform his life. He did not seek for promotion or favor for men. He did not look for friends or relatives 
or any other influential person to seek for permission or to have favor from them. Instead, he looked up to the God himself. Many times in life when we're faced by such a kind of challenges, most of us, we tend even to go to people who can help us. Some will go even to witch doctors. Some will go to what we call wagangas in Kenya just to make sure that their situation is taken care of. But just like Jabez, I want to encourage each and every person who's going to listen to this message. May we run to God so that he can give us the only true assurance that is going to take us out of the bondage in which we are and to everlasting life. Then number three, oh, that you would bless me indeed. That is what he asked. Oh, that you will bless me indeed. Now, Jabez called on the Lord to shower him with blessings upon his life. That is the only thing he had for. God, please remember me and please kindly bless me in everything that I am going to do. He wanted God to remove every curse from his life. He knew that his life was under a curse. That is why even the mother confirms that he bore him in sorrow. And so he wanted God to remove or to cut off all the generational curses that were placed in his life. He wanted the blessing of God upon his life. He wanted the favor and the goodness of God upon his life. He knew that the blessing of God will remove any wretchedness and any misery that he was facing in his life. And the blessing of God would enrich every area of his life. He knew that his spiritual life was going to be strong. He knew that his physical life will be strong. He knew his material, socioeconomic status life will be strong if only he depended on his God. And that is why he says that God, oh, that you may bless me. Let me bring it down to our lives. Have you been faced by a situation and the only thing that you have in your mouth is to ask God for blessings? And that is the same message I'm bringing to you today. In case you are in the same situation and you feel that the situation is hopeless, just pray unto God. Ask him to bless you. God is so faithful. He says that he will do anything for his own and indeed he's going to bless you. And then number four, he says, number four is prosperity. And that is why he prays that, that you may enlarge my territory or that you may enlarge my course. That's according to some of the translations. And so Jabez asked for prosperity and he wanted God to prosper him in his life. He did not want a stagnant and stagnant life. Some of us were going through a lot of stagnation in life. You keep doing something for a very long time and you're not getting any results. And you stagnated in one point and you reach to a point where you lose up. You give up in life and you feel like this situation cannot change anymore. I'm bringing good news to you today that he wanted a life of ever increasing and to be useful and of influence. Just the same way Jabez asked for the same. You too can ask God for the same because he's going to add you your usefulness in this world. You're going to live according to your purpose. The things that were as a result of the generational curses, are not going to hold you anymore. But indeed, God is going to enlarge your territories. And Lord enlarged his borders and territories. He had an expanding vision and dream for his life. And he wanted God to prosper the work of his hands. Some of us who are working, you've been looking for a job for a very long time. Maybe you're working somewhere where the the working environment is so toxic and you don't even know what to do. Your bosses are giving you a hell of time. I mean, your juniors, they don't want to see you prosper because they feel like you're taking all the blessings out of them. I'm reminding you again one more time that may we have this prayer that may God enlarge our territory so that he can prosper and even the blessed work of our hands so that we may be meaningful. We may be able to support even the people who are looking for help. And the fifth thing that he asked for and is the presence of the Lord. Number five, it's the presence of the Lord. And he prayed saying, and that thine hand might be with me. He prayed that may God not depart from his presence. Jabez wanted the presence of God all through in his life. I don't know whether you could wish to pray for the same. Do you wish to have the presence of the Lord all the time? Could you wish to have an in a mutual, intimate relationship with God. That's where you can depend on him wholeheartedly in anything that you want in your life. He did not just seek after the blessing of God. He wanted the very presence of God in his life. He wanted that assurance that in everything that he did, 
God was going to be with him. He did not want the Lord to remove his hand from his life because when he removed his, if God will remove his hand from his life, definitely he was going to fail. But if God is going to hold him all through, then he'll be assured of the blessings henceforth. The hand of the Lord would assure him of the presence all through. It could ensure victory in his battles and demonstration of the power of God in his life and the safe guidance in the journey of his life. And I think that is among the most beautiful prayer that I could wish each of us to be able to recite in our lives, that may God give us back victory in our battles. We're all fighting different battles. Some are sick. Some are facing all the death of their loved ones. Some ha maybe people don't have jobs. Some are having families that are broken where maybe the husband or the wife are going through a lot of turmoil. And some, to some extent, they even don't know how to solve those situations in their family. And just like Jabez, we are praying, God, please, may you be able to ensure that our victories are won. And we can be assured of our victories to be won if we only have our relationship with God. If we only invite God that he may hold our hand, that he may not move it from our lives. It was an unbeatable partnership when his life was always held in God's hand. And I want to plead with you that may we have this prayer in our life so that we may prosper in everything that we do. And then the sixth thing that uh, Jabez prayed for, number six, is protection. And he says, and thou that you will keep me from evil. And thou you will keep me from evil. What a prayer. That may God protect us from evil. Ephesians 6 chapter 11 says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities of this world, against the wild winds of this world, against the enemy who is Satan himself. And so when he prayed this, he knew whom the battle was. And he knew that the battle was not his, but the battle was with the Lord. And he asked God that he may take the battle. Him, he was ready to bow it to fight his battle on his knees. And he knew that God indeed was going to protect him against any evil that was set before him. So Jabez wanted the protection of God upon his life. He realized that he lived in an evil world with so many evil forces that could harm him and destroy him. Just like the experience what you're going through. We know that we're in, in a world where there's a lot of evil and anything can happen to harm us. And he continues by saying he knew that only reliable protection for his life, divine protection of God. Indeed, the only way we can be assured of the protection against and evil is by trusting in God, is by having faith in God, is by knowing that indeed everything that we do will come to accomplishment if we know that God is holding our hands. He sought a supernatural covering over his life. He wanted a preventive defense that will keep him away from God. From evil and to bring him closer to God. He desired that divine protection from God. And I want to appeal to all the listeners, all, all people who are going to watch this, inform, uh, this message. Kindly let us have our protection in God. Let us have and believe that our God is going to protect us from all the evil so that we can be able to work for him. And indeed he is faithful because he says he's going to do it all unto his children. And lastly, he asked for the last thing, and that is pleasure, number seven. Number seven is pleasure. And that is when he says that it may not grieve me. Or maybe, uh, and God grant, and he says that it may not grieve me. So Jabez decided that his life should not be mad with needless grief and pain and agony. And we know that right now, Many people are facing all this challenge. I think since last year when COVID came in, so many families have broken up just because of the situation that we're going in. There's a lot of financial constraints and many families are not able to keep together because they don't, they're not able to sustain themselves. Their children are out, out of school because of school fees. They cannot support to give their family a decent life. People are sick left, right and center and uh, they're looking for every way to get even money to pay for them or as hospital bills. And many of them have succumbed. And so there's pain and agony and grief everywhere. And just like Jabez, he prayed that God, may you help me to be mad from all this needless pain, grief and agony that I may face in my life and as a result of his name. 
He wanted a life full of joy and happiness. And I think that is what everybody is praying for, that we may live joyfully and happily. He knew that only God can grant such a blessing on his life. For the scripture says, at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. He wanted God to grant such a blessing in his life. He did not want to live a wounded and broken life anymore because of what his name was suggesting. But he was ready to turn out all that into a meaningful life. And that is why he asked that God, please, may you change it all for me. He wanted the Lord to keep such a grief away from his life. And the verse 10 ends by saying, and God granted him that which he requested. Prayer by faith. Matthew 21 verse 22, it says, whenever we present our prayer request to God, may we do it prayerfully, but with a lot of faith. Faith is an assurance that God is going to do whatever that we have asked him to do. There is a lot of evidence that God has done it in the past and still is going to do it in the future and is still doing it in the present time. And I want to encourage someone who is going through all this, someone who is broken, who is broken up, someone whose marriage is down, someone who is having family issues, someone who is unemployed, someone who is having someone who is sick at the hospital and they don't know what to do next, someone who has lost their loved one. Just know that it is not yet over because God is going to come through for you. And as he finished by saying, and God granted him the request. And indeed, I pray that may God grant you the request that you are pursuing and may he be able to bless you much beyond that you can imagine. May he enlarge all the territories and the coast that you're working upon. And may he protect you from all evil. And may he give you all that you desire in his life. And thank you so much for listening. And that is our devotion for today. God bless you all. And we will meet next time. God bless you.